Welcome back Egyptology lovers. Uh, welcome back to my Instagram page and this particular video was a request by one of the followers. So today we're doing another cartouche of a royal family or a royal name. Today we're doing the cartouche of Cleopatra the seventh and this is the well-known Cleopatra that we all know the final pharaoh of the Egyptian dynasty or the entire Egyptian history before the Romans took over and eventually became nothing more than a province of Egypt until then the, uh, the Christian era came in as well and so on and so forth through history. So she's considered the last of the pharaohs and she was attested in 51 to 30 BC uh, E or before Christ. So just to uh, recap, so what we have here is two of her most common names. Uh, these names are, there are variations of it, but these are the most common. Uh, now, Cartouche means Shenu, that's the actual correct Egyptian name, Shenu, or word. Cartouche is more of a French word, which was used to identify the cartouche, which was shaped like a bullet cartridge that the soldier used, the French soldiers, when they came to Egypt. All right, so Cleopatra was a Macedonian, not a Greek, so a lot of people think they were Greek, but they were Macedonian. Uh, that was part of the Ptolemy dynasty, so she was the last of the descendant before uh, before she died, after she died. So, now we're going to go ahead and read these two cartouches. What we have here is the Horus name. Now, this is the most, the oldest of the names. Each pharaoh had five names, and this was the oldest, attested in the fourth dynasty. So, what you have here is the Horus. Usually, it's just the bird and most, uh, the falcon and simple falcon and most of the, uh, the pharaoh names with a seraph which surrounded it like a palace and then the name inside it but in her case because it was very later on they just adapted things so they put the double feather crown with the uh, hunum horns on the very top as well so it's almost a multi kind of god uh, of protection or ancient ancestry so the name what we have here is horus we don't pronounce this but what we have here is the word sun like a, a, the, the son of a child, which is an egg, which is sa. But inside, on top here, you have a T, which makes it feminine, therefore daughter. We won't read that, but it's considered sat. So instead of Horus, it's the daughter of Horus. So here we have Weret. Again, this has been parenthesized only because the plural is not in there, but we know it is because it's a female name. So Weret, Wer, Et, Neb, Et, Again, the T is not there. Neferu, so this one is considered a nefer, which is beautiful, but multiple three. U, which is adds the plural, is neferu. And moving on to achet. Again, there's no T, but it is known to be because it's a feminine name. Achet. And then we have sech, right over here. So what does this all mean? It's really down here. Anything in purple means the word are not actually in the hieroglyphs. It's just used in order, it's a convention to be able to read the actual name. So the Horus name is the Great Lady. So the Great Lady, Perfection or Beautiful Perfection. So Great Lady of Perfection, Great Lady of Perfection, Excellent, In, there's no word in, Council. So she was very well known to be a very good diplomat. So this sort of attests to her name that she was excellent in council, that she knew how to be a good diplomat when it came to other nations. So let's move to the most well-known and most important. Uh, and Cleopatra's actual cartouche name was one of the key indicators to deciphering the hieroglyphics, to finally understand the structure. Even though this is later on in Egypt during the Ptolemaic, it still gave a sense of how to finally read the hieroglyphs. The Rosetta Stone was the key but the Rosetta Stone was Ptolemy, but this is Cleopatra. So their names were always written phonetically, not based on the Egyptian words, but phonetically. So how do we write her name? So the first one is the K. Over here we have the rolling hill, K. And the L, for all of you who know your alphabet, is a lion, L. And the I sound is the reed. So we have Kli. Now the O is a milk bag in a knotted cord. So I didn't have the hieroglyph to uh, the magnet, so I just drew it in. So Cleo. And over here, we have the P, which is the seat. Cleop. 
The A, which I'm sure you all know, is the vulture, Cleopa. And now we move to D. Even though we say T, Cleopatra, it's actually D. That's how it was written out. So again, we don't know how they spoke the language, so we can only assume, but that's how it was indicated. So Cleopa, a hand, R, the R, which is a mouth, Cleopa. And again, I didn't have a second uh, vulture, so here it is, a second one, Cleopatra. So let's read it. When you read hieroglyphs, you read facing the animals. So if the line's sticking out that way, you read it in that way. So you start from the top and the bottom. So k li so k l i o p a d r a Cleopatra. And this is the transliteration of the name, and this is her actual name written in in Egyptian at the time, Cleopatra. Here you have the egg. The egg is back over here with the Horus name, and this is Sun. Sun with the bread loaf, the letter T makes it daughter. So what we need to do in her name is add the same principle with the T to feminize the son and turn it into a female daughter. So there you go. Cleopatra. So you'd be daughter. So Cle Cleopatra, daughter. So same principle as Horus, daughter of Horus, great lady of perfection, excellent in counsel. Well, this is the name of Cleopatra. If you go to Egypt or you look online, you'll see that's pretty much what it is. Sometimes there'll be variations, but overall the name will be the same. Uh, sometimes there's added hieroglyphics in the cartouche uh, just to add more of uh, more titles or just a little bit more dig dignified sort of writing. But generally that's how the, 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 the Greek time, well, the Ptolemies did it in their period. So there you go, the daughter of, I mean, Cleopatra the Seventh. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for following me on Instagram. You can go on YouTube and see my profile with the same name at YouTube for Egyptology Lessons. If you have any questions, ask me. If you have any suggestions, I'm happy to do more videos. Thank you and have a good day.